right, we are live. We are live. Aaron and uh and Dean, if you want to unmute, you're more than welcome to. Thanks for Sweet. joining us. Uh, welcome everybody yeah. to another episode of Hack for It Live. Woo. We have some special guests tonight. We have Aaron and Dean joining us from Burdock Games. Uh, welcome to the show, guys. We're stoked to have you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah. Aaron and Dean, I, uh, you know, I've had the pleasure of uh, getting to know you guys over the last couple years, and uh, you guys are both graduates of Boise State, and uh, you guys uh, are developers, and I'm sure you both, you know, you have your day jobs, and you also uh, make some fun games on the side, which is really, really cool. Um, I don't know if, uh, Aaron, you want to kick off, and then Dean, you know, you guys can maybe just kind of do a little intro about yourself, and, you know, why you're in the career you're in, and we'll, we'll just kind of go from there. Yeah, uh, so uh, I'm the design and art half of our two-person team. Um, we're going to be talking about our game, Devout Tournament, which is currently down at Space Bar Arcade. It's a little uh, indie cabinet down there at the moment. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's about all I have for introduction. Like, I'm just really interested in, <laughs> in game design. I'm interested in mechanics. I like yeah. making cool and fun and interactive projects and... Uh, yeah, a anything that comes with that. So I'll let Dean tell you about himself. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm Dean. So uh, I've been doing mainly the programming and more technical kind of side of the of Devout Tournament stuff. Me and Aaron kind of made this game probably only about like a year ago or so. But then luckily we're able to get into Spacebar, which is great. So yeah, I mean, I've always just been super a huge fan of really games that have really tight controls and just intrinsically kind of fun to play. So that was kind of the basic core of how this whole thing kind of came together so oh, awesome, that's guys. basically that well, yeah. so I, I have a question i mean correct me if i'm wrong did you guys graduate from the same program at boise state yep so we both graduated from gam which was games interactive media and mobile technology so that was it was part of a new um it was like a new program that came out of bsu when roughly around the time that both of us started so um yeah we were both uh, with a bunch of other people the first graduates of that program yeah, I, I have to say from, from firsthand experience, when I worked at Boise State, I audited a couple of those classes, and that program is hands down the coolest program, I think, at Boise State. <laughs> I, I, I was like, if I was a freshman, I would have I would have gone all the way through. And I, I took like the intro class, but made my own game. I got to do so much coding in one semester that I was like, my other programming classes I was in, I was like, this is... A, this is more fun, and B, mm -hmm. I'm, I was actually learning object-oriented programming way better than I was in, like, my C class, and, like, so we were just doing boring stuff, you know, where it's, mm -hmm. like, I, way more fun to have a homework assignment where they're, like, figure out how to make your guy jump and move, you know, using the same techniques <laughs> instead of, oh, let's build a calculator. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's fun, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like... <laughs> So yeah, it's really cool. Building, I, I can't speak enough about that program. I'm building a jukebox right now. Yeah. Oh, that's what you're doing in your class. Yeah. I keep telling him to take. He works at Boise State. I keep telling him, dude, just take the gym classes and have, <laughs> have fun and also learn how to code. Like, way more value. It's a cool program because you guys got like a well-rounded education on mm -hmm. not just how to code, but like how to make like how to like insert yourself into the economy. I think after you're done, they give you guys a lot of skills around communication and, you know, teamwork and what that business process looks like and, you know, and, and where you want to apply yourself, you know, and I, I was really impressed. So hats off to you guys. You guys are like one of the, are you the, which cohort were you guys? We were the first, we were, were cohort first. number one. All right, yeah. I'm so we were the one. guinea pigs for the program. Oh yeah, totally. Um, it's yeah. definitely interesting. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, there were a lot of skills to be had. I think one of my memories that sticks out the most was when uh, they had us finalizing our VR games. And they wanted multiplayer in them, and I spent about a week. <laughs> I spent about a week in the library uh, until five a.m. getting that working, oh, and man. I had two computers sandwiched next to each other. So they were like facing each other. And then I had two VR headsets on my head that I was like swapping around, <laughs> going in and out and like checking the clients and the net code and stuff. And I, I can say from an outside experience, walking into the lab in the morning for a class, and I just see Aaron just sort of huddled over, <laughs> like looking through two headsets and giving me this like large eyes, like I, I got it, they're moving. Like, it's finally <laughs> happening. I haven't slept in three days. <laughs> 
Uh, that was yeah that was fun i think one of the funnier things that happened was when i finally got it working um uh they had a couple officers walking the premises because it was that dead week where the library is open like 24 hours yeah and i caught one of them she catches my eyes she goes by the room and i'm like hey you want to come try something i was like i need someone to (laughs) i need someone to be player too and as she's going around i had these i made this game where um i had these snails and you were shooting salt at them out of a a a uh, little old school bug sprayer to like keep a garden going. Um, and to reload it, you just had to tap it on these little salt deposits. And she was like, well, how do I do it? I'm like, well, you just crouch down and tap it. And she's like, well, what button is crouch? Right. <laughs> oh, All you got to do is actually <laughs> crouch down. But it's so funny. that I mean, that's one of the fun things about game design and making stuff is seeing that those like moments where you see the human brain kind of working around it. And yeah. like, well, I'm, I'm every good. other time I've done something like this, there's a crouch button. Like yeah. this yeah. time it's your legs. Yeah. But you get to those little moments happen. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. VR has definitely been very interesting in that regard, like kind of breaking all the walls right like where it's like yeah. oh no you're mm-hmm. actually picking something up now you're not equipping it or walking over it yeah and like yeah, especially with sean's new freaking uh, <laughs> oh, oh you index? got the fancy one yeah, oh, I, picked up index. Dang. Oh, I feel bad now mike showed it off i'm gonna have to let you guys come over and check it out <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i've uh those would be fun to play around with yeah, yeah. they're pretty cool i mean i i really like it but you know, pound for pound, the new quest. You know, Mike has the new one. He just got the mm-hmm. two, and he had the one. It's hard to beat. I mean, it still yeah. to your computer, yeah. and it goes anywhere. And I think the biggest thing about VR, like I have my office here, it's not a big enough space for me to really yeah. enjoy what I think I could do with the index. You know, and like mm-hmm. that, yeah, that freedom's huge. You know, and, yeah, it's like I mean, because we we did we did a lot of development, especially in game on VR stuff. And we always just had just the old, not like the old old school, but just yeah. the Oculus Rift one with yeah. you know two HDMI cords, three USB ports at the whole room scale. <laughs> so like when the Quest came out, I was like, wait, you just plug it in, it just yeah, works. Just, what do you mean yeah, it just yeah. works? It's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair. Yeah. yeah. I'm <laughs> Yeah, we, I had all we've these... seen that setup screen entirely too many times. Yeah, yeah. Oh no! Like, and I had to. I think on my computer, I had to install an extra USB like hub because I, oh, yeah. I didn't have enough mm-hmm. ports. And like, even yeah. the, even if I used them all, my my motherboard couldn't handle it. So I literally had to buy another card just to run the Oculus when it came out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Actually, in game, we literally had like competitions, like who can set up their Oculus first. Of like who who we had, like, the <laughs> minimum time, like two minutes it took oh, to somebody with full room skill set up such a nightmare <laughs> yeah <laughs> well um I, I guess my next question for both of you I, i'm just kind of curious like uh, you know have you guys always been into technology has it been you know something you grew up with like i'm just curious about a little bit of that that history for you of being getting you know to where you are now um dean you want to you want to start yeah uh, i can start um yeah i mean i'd always been super duper into into video games uh ever since i was a kid like my parents i had a gamecube that i just played every single game on it was phenomenal so that was where like i've always sort of had that interest and initially though before i was when i was initially applying for bsu and got accepted i was going as a chemistry major so i was going to do chemistry and do chemical engineering all that kind of stuff. But then, yeah, I saw a game as a course and I'm like, wait a minute, I could do like games and stuff. That sounds pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll just do that. Like that just seems way better. So I did that and found out that I really do enjoy programming as like a, just as almost like an, as an art kind of thing to do oh, where yeah. it was super duper fun to kind of have. So I kind of found a really good kind of calling and rhythm that just sort of really worked. And uh, the, yeah, the rest was just kind of history. Once I kind of, once I kind of found the rhythm that I kind of had in there, it was, I was just like, all right, this is what I'm doing now. Like, this is just exactly what's going to happen. So, nice. yeah. Cool. Aaron? Yeah, for me, the, it's kind of been a, a full circle of interest thing. It's been, it's been kind of interesting. Um, when I was younger, I, I had an interest in making games for sure. Um, I was always kind of put off. I wasn't the best at math, so I was a little afraid of the coding. Um, I, had, I had a full license for Game Maker, back before yo-yo games owned it so it was the old like the original guy that made it i had one of those and i'd done some stuff there and then um i got really into music so i started performing and writing songs uh i went up to school at u idaho for about a year and a half and ended up uh just not i felt like i just didn't know what i was doing came back 
performed, got myself back into school at VSU, and then it all kind of came full circle when, hey, there's this new program. This sounds interesting. I'm going to learn some applied skills, some things that will help me along. And yeah, I just, I ended up in GIM. So I showed up, I showed up, I think about halfway through the first semester of the program and I met Dean and everyone else who was part of it and um, started the next semester. So I ended up pushing myself like a year ahead, doubling up on the courses and getting through with that group. But um, yeah, it's been kind of a full circle thing. I always was interested in making stuff, but never really thought it was something I was going to pursue. And then it just happened to be that Hey, guess what? Coding is like more interesting than than you thought it was. Uh, I, yeah, I've, I've like personally found that I have a lot of friends that are full stack developers and that also have like a some kind of background in art and a lot of a music. You know, you see some that are like into painting and stuff, but I, I there's a, I've always seen this connection between musicians and programming because when it comes down to it, right? There's a lot of logic there and. And, you know, how music is made is similar in a lot of ways to how you put together a program in software, you know, and mm -hmm. I think that it attracts a certain type, you know, my brother, big time full stack developer lives in Portland and he, yeah, music is his life, you know, outside of work. He's, he's always been a huge passion head. I mean, and me to some extent too. I mean, I'm, I've dabbled in everything, you know, and I mean, you guys know I'm part of tree fort and I love music and I love technology and here i am you know <laughs> just kind of following those two things yeah you know <laughs> yeah there's there's definitely an overlap like if you've ever had any experience in songwriting or something like the the process is for me it was always finding interesting interesting words interesting phrases and ways that you can get things to work together and then piecing that song together until you have that completed project and then when you get to step back from it and see like how it's working and how the whole thing sounds and like the final package, there's definitely something similar in the process. And then in the reward at the end of it, where you see something that came together and now it's kind of art that's a little beyond you, but you know, all the little intricacies of it. And it's really cool to see that, see that come together. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. It's interesting. You talk about the connection with like programming and music, because especially when things started kind of locking down a little bit more, I was trying to like find some new hobbies that I could kind of pick up. And I was like, well, I got this keyboard that's just been running around for like forever. I might as well start like learning piano a little bit and found that I ended up like really enjoying like learning piano and things like that. And I realized that, yeah, it's very similar in a way, at least for the musical theory kind of stuff, which is what I started getting more into that. I'm like, it's a similar kind of rule set of just general rules and general best practices to kind of follow but then obviously you can break them and distort them in as many ways as you can think of but it's an interesting connection there yeah yeah I mean, so what was it some of the first music you started learning was like hollow night tunes wasn't it <laughs> yeah, yeah video yeah. game tunes obviously yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. come on <laughs> it's always got to come back to that right i mean mike's yeah. mike's another musician here guys and yeah, i can break it down <laughs> I'm, I, I rock the keys as well yeah and uh i know quite a few video game music so oh, I love it. Michael just get on a keyboard and he'll just start playing a Mario That's song right. and I'll be like, oh, you know, like, just, you know. I'm thinking about making it a shtick here for this thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you should do it. You should yeah, do it. I mean, for real. <laughs> well, I, I, before we move into the, the, the meat and potatoes, as it were, like the other question I really had for you guys is like, I, I'm just curious, like what are what both of you are just really excited about in technology right now, like trends in the industry. This could be anything that incites you. I'm just curious what, what uh, you guys are looking forward to or what, what you're stoked about right now. Uh, Aaron, you want to start? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think uh, I'm interested to see what happens. There's a, a one of the big uh, reasons why GIM happened as a program was just due to the integration of, the idea of gaming and education or it going into other areas. So with like VR coming up, if we start seeing better adoption of the technology, there's a lot of people that talk about making training simulations and stuff like that. Um, I think that's interesting. And I like that people are talking about it. Um, I recently, Jonathan Blow, uh, do you guys everyone know who I know Dean and I know who he is, yeah. uh, the creator of braid. Yeah. Um, the witness and all that he did a talk on twitch about education and gaming and i think he made some really interesting points where the concept of gamification is not a good one because it's just it's getting badges and it it's 
it's really kind of simple, basic things that are more incentives than actual educational processes. Hmm. And there's a really interesting place in games that I think we might start figuring out a little more in depth uh, in, in coming years. And that's how you can, instead of just creating a reward structure based around education, you can start making things that are interactive and teach basic principles that you can then put the actual like full course of education on top of. So yeah, I, and I'm interested to see where those kind of ideas go. And I, I think we're getting some amount of technology that's leaning towards it. I think people just need to shift their thinking of what that means. And oh. there's, there's some cool places for that to go. Well, that's an interesting point. I, you know, we hear gamification and I remember even hearing that when I was in the gym class. Right. And, you know, it has a good idea in, in turn. Right. But like, what's keeping it from ending up just being a more task driven thing in the end. Right. Well, I can't, we need to make it fun. And it, it like, I feel like he's trying to say it needs to be like a game. Like it needs to be more than just, yes. uh, uh, you know, pick that was, fetch quest. Or that was one, of the, <laughs> one of the points that blow made in his talk was just that like, okay, if you're putting incentives on there, if you think like Duolingo, like you're always coming back, uh, you return to it and it tells you how long your streak's been going for and how well you're doing. And like, that's cool, but it doesn't add to the educational fact. It just kind of gives you that little brain incentive to go, oh, I can't let that that <laughs> streak drop. Yeah, yeah. And when you look at school and the gamification of education, like you're just making school more school. So <laughs> yeah. instead of getting an A at the end of the class, you're getting A's every day through as you're getting those badges or whatever it is yeah. that they're doing to keep you incentivized. When the places where you could be looking are let's say you're teaching students about elementary particles or something. And so what you do is you have a little game that bounces particles around and on the surface, you don't tell them what this is, but it ends up being kind of a low level simulation of some of the really basic ideas. And that just gets it ingrained. It gives them a point wow. of reference to look back to. And then you can build on top of that with the things that video games can't do, which is actual school. Well, that's a really but, good point. Um, huh. If you look at that, once again, through like training, education, or even just, I don't know, like civic responsibility or something, get people involved with their community. I think there's little places where that can happen. We just haven't thought of it yet. Hmm. We haven't quite thought of it yet. And I think it's an interesting place. So oh. there's people talking about it, but we haven't seen a real, a real <laughs> actualization of it. Hmm. Wow, that's fair. Dean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think, at least for me, the only thing that I think something I'm very excited about is I know that there's been, especially on like Twitch, there's been a lot of rise of, of games that are much more accessible to a lot more people. I mean, it used to be now that, uh, mainly the example I'm thinking of is Among Us that has, has popped off wildly on Twitch and all over, you know, yeah. social media in general. politicians playing it right now. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Which is super cool. Like, it's a yeah, super it's cool stream. thing. Yeah. But what what's really great, I think what was really interesting about that is that, you know, even these people who are typically non-gamers who haven't played games all their life or are super used to it um, can just pick these games up and immediately get them because a lot of these games rely on skills that people have just developed in their life. I mean, Among Us is like deception and and lying and things like that, but that's still a skill. So I, I've just been really excited about having more games. Yeah, yeah it's very <laughs> more like yeah, I feel like that game is very community driven and very mm -hmm. like, right. You're, you're like you're on this ship together as a community trying to solve these things, but then there's that mm -hmm. deception part or that, mm -hmm. and it creates a really fun experience because you're, if you're with your friends, you end up have you know end up having a laugh essentially, right? Because yeah. someone tricks you or whatever, but you're all yeah. working together at the same time, and we, I think people want to work together, right? And, yeah, and... <laughs> yeah. So I, I've just been excited that there have been these games that now you can just play on your phone, but then also play with people on these crazy three thousand dollar PCs yeah. and like everything in between. So it just makes it so that way, just about anybody can be like pick this up and then yeah, have that same sort of community experience that everyone can kind of all share together. And like it's super cool that all the games and at least some I don't know I always think that like the best type of mechanics and games are ones that you don't have to ex you don't need a tutorial for. Yeah. But like everyone when they see the wires in when you're fixing wires in Among Us and you see the colors you're like I know blue's got to go to blue I know red's got to go to red and 99% of people can figure that out which I think is just a super good oh, trend awesome. to kind of just have more accessibility. So oh, yeah, really cool. 
Well, I guess I, I guess I shouldn't keep complaining about my frame rate in Warzone on my PC. <laughs> it's super expensive. I'm only PC. getting sixty. This is terrible. <laughs> this I is mean, crap. for that one, it's for the file size. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, love that. I yeah, I love hearing about that game every time somebody gets an update and like it's installing another four hundred gigs. <laughs> It's pretty funny because I'm like, oh, I can uninstall the campaign. I'm like, oh, wait, Warzone and the multiplayer is like still 200 gigs. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) One of our friends has uninstalled it and he's like, oh, I'll just like, I'll just just take the multiplayer now. And he's like, no, you have to install the campaign first and then uninstall it later. And I'm like, that's not how (laughs) this should work. That's not how this should work. Oh, God. That's hilarious. It's the world we're in right now. Yeah. Petty yeah. things, petty things. <laughs> well, all right, guys. Well, let, let's fast forward a little bit. So you guys, you know, graduated school. And then when did you guys decide you wanted to work together to kind of start like a game studio together and, and start working on some stuff? Uh, yeah, pretty much was that. So we both followed a, a YouTuber called Game Makers Toolkit, who just does a lot of like game design analysis of a bunch of different games. And every year he hosts a, a game jam. So basically like a three day extravagancy you have 72 hours day of you get the you get given a topic of okay like you're out of control like make an entire game or surrounding that so um basically the uh, this whole thing essentially came from this one game gem that we did where the theme was just one thing that was the theme is just one thing so from that we kind of basically put together a whole game and 72 hours and i don't think we slept either me and aaron did i don't think or if i did it was a small amount it wasn't <laughs> we, it we wasn't. got a couple naps in but yeah. i remember the yeah when you hit that and, and like near the end delirium i have some uh some stuff i can show at some point but part of that was uh i've been i have this thing where i really want to make stuff with like 2d characters and 3d worlds mm-hmm. um and so that was something i shot for and i was like well dean i'm gonna do top down eight directional sprites and they're going to be fully animated. And I'm like, this is fine. I've done this before. I got a couple bases <laughs> I, to start off. With. I got this. And of course it's like <laughs> near the end of the second night. And I'm, I've been up all night, like still animating. And I'm just like, I got it. <laughs> it it's almost done. Just breaking my brain. But uh, I can show those sprites at some point during this conversation. But uh-huh. uh, yeah, I think it, it was also just a continuation of, what we'd done previously because mm-hmm. when we were in gym we um we did the immersathon together we were on a group for that we made various things here and there together just between the students and then um uh oh i lost my train of thought for a second yeah there it was just kind of a continuation of what we were doing so yeah. it kind of made sense mm-hmm. um whenever yeah when we were working on our individual games dean had this really cool one that was like a puzzle box, but one person wore the VR headset and the other one played on the mouse and keyboard and had to like communicate between each other. And when he was working on that, he came to me a couple times and was like, Oh, like I have this, but how does it work? And so I'd sit down with him and be like, well, this, you need like some reason for the player to hit this thing and go there. So we just already had a bit of a dialogue around doing this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So when it came to the game jam, it was like, well, of course we're going to do that. Um, i'm also like 50 percent sure that for our game jam we invited like six people and then aaron was the only one to get back to me and i'm just yeah. like well i guess it's just you and me now we're gonna i mean there's no way i'm not showing up i love it. i've <laughs> i've made a couple other quick game jams over over the course of the lockdown and it's it's just fun to do i enjoy mm. it it's when you get to flex those muscles and usually like game development is something that has to take so long that if you if you give yourself the opportunity to fail a little and you're like, this is going to be a little messy, but I'm going to have something at the end of this. Mm-hmm. It, you actually get to flex some muscles that usually take like months to get to it's planning and making assets and trying to really polish stuff. You go, it's not going to be as polished, but we're going to have something. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. It's, it's starting out normally like the hardest thing to do. I know I'm a, I'm a writer. So I know that, to me, the hardest part is just getting something on the page, and then mm-hmm. and then I can edit it after that. Is it kind of the same thing? Yeah. Yeah, it's. Oh, sorry, Dean. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. No, you're you're good. Yeah, I was going to say that, especially with like the technical stuff. It's like it's a really steep learning curve to kind of start, just because it, it, it especially for people who don't kind of have a, even a basic grasp of how programming kind of works. Like it just seems like it's just it's like a completely different language. So 
it's so there is that learning curve that like you kind of have to get over but once you like pass it then you realize oh now it's just like i can just google my way to victory and make pretty much anything <laughs> yeah. but <laughs> like i think once you can get past like the the fundamentals of it yeah i think it, it's know, there but like yeah once you know the words to google <laughs> oh yeah oh you got it i guess now a programmer's job is like 80 percent googling and then it's like 20 percent like actual knowledge and math but like... honestly that's a that's a really good point dean i i'm a big believer in like anybody who's in the technology field i don't look for people that are like i know it all i look for the people that go i don't know the answer to that but i know how to figure it out because that's yeah. the key right like when you're coding a project you're always going to run into like a function or something that's stuck. And you're like, I have no idea why this isn't working, but you're like, Oh, I know this forum that might have, you know, someone might know. And like being able to use your community and use the tools that are in front of you is I think a fundamentally one of the most valuable skills. And if you want to work in technology in any field in technology, it's, mm-hmm. it's uh, troubleshooting is, is, is everything, you know? And uh, yeah. so, yeah, that's, that's key. <laughs> yeah google's google's our hero Stack yeah <laughs> and our enemy or whatever <laughs> it, it's all of it, all the bunched up in one i mean what, what are you gonna do <laughs> so so you guys like you you started you made a game and then when did you guys decide to make like the the company burdock games i'm gonna actually pull up the website on the stream so people can see it um but yeah where did that come burdock like the name like um yeah actually if you want to at some point on there is one of the more up-to-date videos of gameplay so we can show that as a demo of it too um yeah we might maybe we'll have you share it and we'll just watch it on yours just so you can maybe talk about it but yeah okay i just pulled up the website burdockgames.com if anyone wants to check that out good website guys look you're both i mean that that's more or less uh it's just kind of a name to work mm-hmm. under mm-hmm. um while we're currently this is this is a uh, an indie title it's down at yep. uh at space bar and that's that's where it's at for the foreseeable future this is kind of a uh it's like a, a nice test bed where we can put new levels in and see how it's playing and what goes on with it um the name itself just kind of we needed something <laughs> and it's a name that i've used in games mm-hmm. for a while for different locations it actually started out as an animal crossing town i think on the ds <laughs> um so yeah we just we needed something that's what we rolled with we wanted something that would give us the ability to make like this weird game about cultists sacrificing each other to their gods or like <laughs> something maybe a little more lighthearted or we just wanted something that wasn't gonna just be like you know axe killer games and have us stuck in that kind of mode mm-hmm. um yeah well, yeah. yeah, so I guess, like, let's just, let's get into the game. I mean, I guess you guys can kind of start with, you know, what it's called and, and you know, it's called Devout, but, like, you know, the story and the idea behind it. Yeah, um, I'll get the yeah. video ready to bring up. Yeah. Um, the, the start of it was just we, we sat down for the game jam. They gave us the, uh, they gave us the theme, which, as Dean said, was called Only One. And that was however you interpret it. Only one button, only one life, only one level. Um, And I had come in being like, I want to do this thing with like little rogues stabbing each other. I don't know what that looks like, but for some reason that's in my, in the back of my head. And Dean was going, Oh, I want like a fighting game with one move. Uh, What was, is it, what's that head kicking game? Yeah, there's like I got inspired because there was a there, I forgot I forgot what the game is actually called now, but there was a different game that was just called because I've always been super interested in fighting games and that idea of like footsies. I mean, it's also in like real fighting, but mm-hmm. uh, it's just like the there's so much of this weird meta game of just moving left and right. So there was literally a game made called Footsies where you have one move. And it's just you kick and you try and kick somebody's foot. And it's like, but it's like there, it, people are really competitive about it because oh, it's God. it's footsies. So um yeah i wanted to kind of have that and with one thing we weren't exactly sure what at the time we're just like one thing i think for a fighting game could be could be kind of interesting to kind of play around with so so what that what that came down to is i i looked at him and was like okay well how about this we do something that's like top down we have an arena and then our option is that we only have one attack but that one attack is tied to something that the players have to have Mm -hmm. so it ended up being that we have um one weapon in the arena and the players fight over that weapon to be able to attack each other. So there's that interplay of 
being on the defensive, but also having to regain the ability to be on the offensive. It's it and that play between the two the two characters. And then from that, like in the middle of some late night delirium, I was like, okay, so the idea is that there is this evil eldritch god, and these are his two cultists, and he wants a sacrifice by combat, but they have to do it with his knife. So that's where the knife comes from. <laughs> And the first, uh, the first round. Now it's called Devout Tournament, but the first level was called a Sacrifice for Sladakthis. <laughs> and I it was just an attempt to come up with like the craziest, unpronounceable, unreadable name possible. And I still can't spell actually, it right. I yeah, still can't spell it right. <laughs> I came up with this way of spelling it that's like no sil or uh, obviously there's syllables, no vowels. And um, he put it in the arcade cabinet, if you go down there and play it, when that level comes up, it constantly respells the god's name <laughs> just to keep it confusing. And I love, Dean put that idea out there. I'm like, that's that's perfect. That that's has to go right in. now. Um, but here, I'm going to present yeah, yeah, let's watch show a video that. of it. Yeah, let's the and then I can, I can also show the original game. Um, yeah. I mean, should I do the? Yeah, I'll do the video. Yeah, the we'll video actually. Do, yeah, share your good. screen and, and do the video, and then we'll uh, go from there. Um. All right. Hopefully, the latency is good. Yeah, it looks like it's going. Yep. Everyone seeing it? Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay, there we go. So yeah, this just shows everything that happens. You're trying to get the weapon from each other. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. You have uh, the button switches from being that uh, the disarm or the attack based on whether or not you have the weapon. Yeah, that obviously was, showing the arcade controls. When I played it, you guys did a good job because you know obviously timing that parry attack is really important. This is a game that Mike excels at. These type of games. Yeah, this is right these are Mike's like, jam. Like we Dean's, Dean's got some news for you on that. We'll, we have yeah. to talk about when we first demoed it because that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Once this is over, I'll explain that. It was hilarious. <laughs> I can totally. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Top it, it, down. It, Tower fall. Yeah, you, you could see that tower fall. The dodge and uh, the ability you know, inspiration to... for sure. I mean, that's what I thought when I was playing. I was like, oh yeah, this Get is deflect. We did actually have a great moment where we were finishing this up and it was like the morning after we submitted it and then we were just play testing it and then we had this moment where we looked at each other and we're like, this is actually fun to play. This, <laughs> this, this, this never happens. This oh, is crap. actually like really fun. Like, whoa, what the hell? Like, it's, it's so easy with game design to come up with something where you think like, oh, this will be really fun. And then once it's put into practice, you find that it's either really convoluted or there's there's something that's not quite hitting the right point. And that's where, you know, you have more time to hammer it out and figure out what's going on with it. Um, yeah. But yeah, in the case of this one, I think we just settled on a really good idea. Um, the two points of inspiration that we had ended up working out. The idea came together really well. And then it was just, it was just fun. Yeah. It was really yeah. cool looking at each other and going, we should really keep making this. this is neat. <laughs> so yeah, we had a we had a great opportunity with it where we initially um, showed it off to Spacebar and they're like, "Hey, we're doing this fight night thing." So this is you know we have everyone comes here and does a bunch of different types of fighting games. So we do like Mortal Kombat, Smash, all that kind of stuff. So they're like, "Hey, you should just bring it on down and have people play it." And it was the community was amazing and everyone was super nice about it. But I'll never forget that so you bring up the parry. This is a beautiful moment of my life because that <laughs> when when we made this game, I was like, if we're gonna make it a fighting game, I should do the fighting game thing where like instead of things, you know, instead of your parry animation being point two something seconds, I was like, let's just do it in frames. Cause that's like normal fighting games run at 60 frames per second. I'll give you this many frames. So I Googled like what's a decent number? And I was like, cool. I so I picked number. So literally the I show this game off to a guy. This guy walks up to me and he's he sees somebody parry, he's like how many frames? Like, <laughs> how many frames of parry do I have? And I'm like, seven. I know this for a fact that it's just seven he wanted frames. to hook it. He was like, this guy's gonna tell me it's like oh about half a second. I'm like, no, seven frames. And I, and I yeah. looked at him and I'm like, seven frames. And he, and he goes and he goes like, okay. He's like, okay. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool, I'm good. <laughs> I fast him, but I just I'll never forget that that was such a beautiful moment. Like I'm a like fighting game dude. purist. He's like, oh, seven, yeah, that's, that's oh good. man, that's that was one of the honest nights. Iframes. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> that night was so much fun because we came down and uh, yeah, that was space bar fights. And they had people showing up with their towers. They had people bringing down towers and full arcade sticks to play Tekken against each other. They had like oh. Tekken and Dragon Ball Fighter and a bunch of other stuff. Um, it was it was perfect. It was just like our people. You, you yeah. brought your tower down to a bar yeah. for a LAN party. We were trying to get that same group at Hackport this year, actually. And, like, mm-hmm. they yep. they had a tournament the same weekend. And so we were like, oh, man. Because we were going to have them just run a fighting game tournament, you know. And then you guys were going to be part of that as well, which we can get to mm-hmm. that. Um, mm-hmm. and I still want you guys to be part of it. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's so cool, guys. That you got to, like, show it off during a tournament where all the yeah. the purists as it were are there yeah you know? yeah, oh, yeah. We've, uh, we even we held like an impromptu tournament that night and it I, at first i was thinking like well maybe we'll have some people sign up and i had to start at some point i had to go like i can't take any more people mm-hmm. um and the the tournament was awesome if anyone's uh watching has been down down for a space bar fight said dave the fave uh was down there yeah MC the whole thing yeah it was incredible and he, he called every fight. I was like, okay, you know what it when they're up? No, he stayed and watched the screen and was like, it was like having the best announcer ever. Just, yeah. Call, yeah. I can't think that we're casting. He was casting the entire yeah. fight for uh, the whole tournament. It was so much fun. <laughs> um, but based, based off of that showing, Spacebar was like, all right, that went well. Like, how do we get it on the floor? Wow. And that's where that conversation started. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so what was that? process like i mean you know i i'm aware of like what goes into making cabinets and stuff but like will at space bar and he's a cool guy like they and they have had other homegrown games in there before but you guys are like yep. the first one i know where i was like man this is like i'd play this I and mean, i'd go in and put quarters <laughs> in you know and and straight up play it you know and so what what how'd that go i mean that was that was a pretty simple process dean and i are definitely like the partnership we have a space bar is like we make the game you guys make the cab mm-hmm. um uh i i'd like to make it sound more mystical mm-hmm. and mysterious mm-hmm. than it is but it's really yeah. just an arcade cabinet with a screen yeah. and a computer inside we don't have to make boards anymore or do anything yeah. crazy like that but we definitely like put some effort into picking out like what tech goes into it um so finding a computer that was going to work for us obviously you don't want to like buy some massive gaming rig but being that we're we're doing particle effects 3d we need something the sticks are actually um full analog uh arcade sticks so they're not eight gates or anything you have full movement of the characters in there um yeah and and then like one big button right it's like one stick one big button it's two buttons yeah 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 really cool i mean i yeah i mean you i think I, that's what i was stoked about was not only did you guys make a cool game but i feel like the cabinet f- matches the game really well and it's not like crap mm-hmm. right like you got the quality is there and so that's why i was really impressed with and i think that's important right if you're gonna sell it you know oh yeah I, I mean space bar hooks us up with that they yeah. have uh, their artist um bruce who worked on the uh the graphics on it and everything with us and that that stuff came out fantastically. The uh, the logo that we saw at the start of the video, where it says "Devout Tournament," that was designed by Bruce, mm-hmm. um, and that was that's the stuff that's all over the cab. So yeah, we have we have some plans for that in the future. We're just uh, it's kind of a, a process of building it up and making the cabinet better and doing cooler things with it. What what kind of computer did you put in it? Is it just us like? Yeah, what it's is like it? a stock new egg gaming. Computer. Yeah, it's like it's a just like, it's just a PC, just a basic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, we we did a couple of little bits of testing. Like like Spacebar had this older like Linux machine, which I tried for three days to like just You're get like, to no. work, <laughs> and I'm like, this is not working. I'm just not dealing with this anymore. Yeah. But so yeah, we had, they they were super nice and like, hey, just give us what we need. What do you need? And it was just yeah, it's not like the game is too crazy, yeah, like yeah, computationally yeah, I mean, insane. Yeah, you just need so. something that's gonna run the game smooth and. You know, yeah yeah you don't need a lot raspberry you know? pies too <laughs> not not well, as like, good in my yeah. head i was like, thinking like those intel nooks have you guys seen those those are like pretty for like a cheaper pc they're small but they've got like some horsepower when it comes to like the a processor and the graphics i've always been curious about playing around with one of those yeah for, we might have to check it out yeah mm-hmm. those are pretty cool um well that's awesome i mean and yeah the games at spacebar anyone listening if you're in boise 
go to space bar wear your mask check it out <laughs> i mean it, it's fun i i had a fun time playing it i mean that's and i really have to hats off to you guys i mean that's not easy I, one thing i was going to say to you guys is i feel like you know in game development right we have all these big triple a games and all these complex things but a lot of these really big games that have blown up the last few years it's almost like less is more right like mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. making a simple game and there's not a lot to it and and because of that it's so accessible it's yeah. you know and I, yeah. I think there's really something to that you know like uh what's what's the the soccer game the cars rocket league the rocket, rocket league you know yeah. yeah it's just cars and a soccer ball you know but how insane yeah. is that you know like and i think that's why i i enjoy yeah. your game and i think anyone can jump in you know mm -hmm. well, yeah i think a lot of that comes a lot of that comes down to like the i think especially now which is really good i think the way the industry is kind of starting to point at least a little bit is this sort of like lean towards more like intrinsically enjoyable things like you know mario's jump the reason i think mario was so successful is that just controlling mario in a completely blank space is still like intrinsically kind of fun mm -hmm. as and like i think yeah, so those things exactly like Rocket League, like just driving a car around and hitting a ball is just like intrinsically a cool thing to do. So <laughs> like being able to have those types of games that have that just above all else, like this is just fun to play in a vacuum and then the rest just kind of follows from that. Then you can add the rules and the complexity and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I think it's that intrinsic stuff that's super important. Yeah, yeah there's a lot that happens in the industry right now where you see... Um, Actually, one one game I could point to. Have you guys seen Genshin Impact? Oh yeah, that uh, yeah. Breath of the Waifus. Um, <laughs> it's it's well made. Like it's pretty. There's a lot of cool stuff in it. But I think one thing that that's interesting to point to is that you know it it it's so much Breath of the Wild. And then what they did is they went throw in the kitchen sink with the RPG mechanics. So now you have levels. You have a bunch of weapons. You're going to be grinding out experience and doing this and that and there's kind of a point in the industry where there's a lot of tried and true techniques that get people invested in a game and keep them coming back to it. And a lot of those end up looking like RPG level up mechanics and bars and things like that. And that's fine. But um, definitely the, the point of game design that interests me the most is finding, finding that interaction that makes something meaningful and really fun to engage with and, and finding out what, what moves forward from there and definitely a lot of indie games that you see um start to start to like come up and get really popular seem to be taking that much more mu much more to heart and mm -hmm. i it's probably because they have more freedom to work in that kind of space instead of having to worry about how many copies are they going to sell because they put this much time into you know really high powered graphics or something yeah. um or when they release yeah. a game like Genshin Impact that you know must have taken a long time to develop and they release it for free and mm -hmm. like you said with all those incentives like you know clearly their goal is to make money on people that hopefully get hooked on you know the endorphins they get from leveling up and <laughs> yeah so, I mean, that's yeah. definitely part so, of it so I guess yeah the the company I guess uh, the culture the reason why I guess you're making the game in the first place matters too. <laughs> if it's mm -hmm. all about money, then you can be loot boxes and, you know, lock people out every, you get like one minute to play for free a, a day. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think, uh, yeah, definitely the thing I would, I, I point to, and that is just the, I'm trying to think of other games that have done it recently. Cause there's just, there's a lot of them where you'll see something where it, it has kind of a core. There's something there, but then the way that they expand on that core is by going like RPG. They, they throw in a lot of those things that it, it extends out the time frame of it and keeps things going. And I love RPGs. Like I've played a lot of them. I love old school ones. Mm -hmm. I love uh, when things shut down. One of the first things I did is I did a, another playthrough of Chrono Trigger. Love that game. Yeah. Um, Elder Scrolls, been a fan of that for a long time, but definitely like in the way of design and development, I think there's really interesting ideas that come out of finding a, a core concept and then running with it. Um, with Baba is You is a really interesting one that comes to mind where the guy was inspired by like coding languages and then was pushing those blocks around to change the rule set of the game. Like you would change the, the algorithm and the code 
lot, lots of neat stuff like that. That's and cool. you know, it's, it's shorter, but it didn't, he didn't have to tack on a bunch of level up systems and stuff to make it interesting. You got to explore that idea. Have you yeah. guys, have you guys played wind jammers? Okay. I love wind jammers. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to Will about this because they have that SNK yeah. cabinet base bar I, and I just found it did that not out. have it before. Yeah. I was stoked and I found out they got it because of Dave. Yeah. And I was like, I was telling Will, I was like, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. I didn't expect to see a cab with wind jammers on it, and that's cool. I love it. I had never really played it until I saw that it had like this giant resurgence in like the indie arcade scene and mm -hmm. tournaments, like big tournaments with this game. Like I, I want Mike. Mike hasn't played it yet, but it, I mean that's an example of a game that was really old and simple, and now there's like people obsessed with it, and it's so popular with the developers making the new one, which is coming out yep. soon. And like I was watching videos for it, I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be fun. Like people are gonna be <laughs> playing Windjammers too, four days, and it's like, yeah, it's a cool game. It's like yeah, Windjammers was really cool. It's like air, air would... hockey with a with characters with abilities, with like goals. It's two people, two dimensional overhead. It's really cool, Mike. Yeah. Pong Pong Frisbee fighting game. Yeah, yeah, uh, this sounds incredible. I mean, just yeah. The, not to get too sidetracked, but have you guys yeah. seen uh, Lethal League? Mm -mm. It's another one in a similar vein. Lethal League is insanely cool and really fun the second one's out and it's really like, it's worth know. picking up no no wait i'm saying it's so good oh, it's it so is. good it's so good it's really good the whole Make concept the oh. it's yeah. similar to windjammers um you have two characters uh you're in like a fighting arena but instead of attacking each other with attacks you have like a pong ball that you have to bounce back and forth oh, and so okay. it's it's dodgeball and pong and street fighter uh. and it's yeah. so well done. I'm sure. That, I'm sure it has a windjammer really like inspiration. I mean, I, when I played it, like finally Sounds played like Mega it, Mega Man Soccer to me. Yeah, well, it kind of, kind of <laughs> in a way, Mega Man Soccer. But like, wait, you know, I, yeah. that's the cart that I want. But I want, I, mean, I want a Mega Man Soccer cart so bad. <laughs> Buddy Chris yeah, has that. Someday. Aaron, you might have to, you might have to shell out some money. I'll ask Chris if he still has it. <laughs> I feel like sixty bucks. It's not a bad one unless no. you want the box with it, but. Yeah, yeah no. so, something I'll pick one of those up. Yeah, Witchhammer's too, like, again, like, the art style, though, like, it, it, it's like Street Fighter and, like, you know, Japanese to an extent, but, like, it, it was so fun and, like, the characters are goofy, you know, and, I mean, mm. Joe Joe and Joe were playing it and oh. they were laughing, you know, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, like, it's competitive, too, it really is, so, that's a good one, yeah. definitely. <laughs> well, cool, guys, uh, what... You know, before we start wrapping up here, I guess, you know, what, you know, what, what's next for you guys? What are you guys working on? Anything you want to talk about? Um, yeah, we're just excited to hear what you guys are thinking for the future. Uh, yeah, so uh, um, at least right now, I um, got hired on as a programmer for Hackjack Studios in Boise, which has been amazing. So that's been super great to do. So mainly just been focusing on on that kind of stuff, at least for the time being, as well as just, you know, just living, making making stuff kind of happen there as best as possible. But yeah, I think just uh, just kind of keep on improving the craft as much as I can, and kind of keep expanding with it. And yeah, with with devout tournament, I'd like to just keep on seeing more. Like Aaron has so many fan like random ideas he just throws at me, and I'm like, I need this in the game now. I have to put this in the game now. <laughs> like ideas for weapons and stages and mechanics cool. and things like that. So cool. probably hopefully getting more of those in there as well. And because I want to see more stuff in that cabinet, and as well as just yeah, more people. I would love to have another tournament down there eventually at some point. When obviously it's good to have that, but yeah, uh, just that community. Then we were, when we were down there for fight night was just so amazing that like I want to. I'd love to to do that again sometime just because that was great so yeah. yeah 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 uh i'm just doing what i do i've been working on a couple contract jobs here and there uh currently working on another project for spacebar and trying to find a door somewhere into the games industry so cool. you know if anyone watching has any leads or wants to contact me please look me up <laughs> um yeah, and just making stuff. Just I always have a couple games that I'm working on. I have one that I've been working on with a friend for a while that I think we're moving it over to Unreal Engine soon, and we're hoping to see some stuff happen with that. But um, yeah, just doing what I do. That's where I'm at. Awesome. 
Well, yeah, guys, I mean, I, uh, I really hope that we, you know, tree fort next year is still on as of right now. And we still plan to hopefully bring you guys to the, you know, to tree fort and hack fort, and hopefully we can have a tournament there so people can give it a shot. You know, we can probably yeah. come up with some fun. Hell yeah. And, <laughs> Hell and yeah. We're going to show up. Yeah. Show up. We're going to be very excited. Oh, yeah. I'm so stoked. It gives, you, yeah. it gives you guys some time to build some new stages or some new, you know, yeah. add to the game, you know, and, uh, for everyone listening, you know, again, go if you're in Boise, check it out at Space Bar. You know, um, follow Burdock Games. You know, hit up hit up Dean and Aaron anytime, and we look forward to having them at Tree Fort too. So you guys can uh, come meet them there if you're if you're digging the game. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, guys, I I really appreciate you coming on. I'm gonna play the the rollout music on our side, and uh, if you want to stay on for a minute, you can. Once we stop recording, we'll uh, we'll chat. Oh, yeah, sweet. man. Thanks for having cool. us. Yeah, right. thanks for having us. Thanks, guys. Yeah. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. All right.